Hello, hello everyone. Um, my name is Miguel Sana. Um, I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft, and I'm also the main of Landlock, which is a new Linux security model which was in mainline, which was introduced in mainline last year, in the 5.13 kernel. And this talk is about uh, the updates since then, and which is mostly about the, some improvement on the file access control types and some ongoing um, work for the support networking uh, access control types. Okay, um, so also some important news which are not directly related to, related to the kernel, but which are important, um, well, useful for everyone, is that uh, Lenox is now enabled by default in uh, some Linux distros. So, uh, for example, Yumin 2, Fedora, Arch Linux, Alpine Linux, Gen 2, which use um, the Fedora configuration, and others are ongoing. Um, for example, the Chrome OS is working on uh, supporting Linux 2. Um, so, just to understand a bit, so at first, uh, Linux was a minimum viable product. So, the upstream version, which is um, which was ported in a 5.13 kernel, only contain a subset of what Linux could do. And, well, it was required for, uh, of course, uh, to minimize the code, to minimize the review, to minimize the computation, to minimize the tests, which are all, well, already uh, important enough. Um, and yeah, so over the time, um, well, uh, Nanog is kind of a journey, um, and yeah, it is an incremental development. So, one other feature uh, I just try to um, explain is uh, some limitations that were, well, that are still there, and how we can, um, well, lift them. And in the second part, yeah, I will talk about uh, ongoing work for well, to support network access control. But first, let's recap a bit what is sandboxing. Uh, maybe not everyone is on the same uh, page. So um, sandboxing, especially security sandboxing, is a security approach to isolate software component. So you can uh, imagine component might be either an application, container, or a set of processes from the rest of the system. So, um, Nowadays, we know what uh, isolation means, uh, lockdown, stuff like that. Um, but concerning application processes, um, we should keep in mind that even trusted application, trusted process, um, can become malicious over time. So that's a really important point. Um, even if you develop a your application, you control it, and the user may trust you and trust your application, well, um, because of bugs exploited by attackers, um, well, it may change its behavior and become malicious. That's why there is sandboxing. And the two main properties of sandboxing are, well, to follow the least privilege principle, uh, which is to not require more privileges uh, to drop access uh, that you already have. So in NHL, to not use uh, set to ID binaries. And another important policy is that these policies, because they should be accessible to everyone and anyone, they could also be accessible and used by attackers. So being able to enforce a security policy should be innocuous for the rest of the system. And we should also be able to compose different security policies because you have multiple applications and each of them uh, could use and enforce a security policy dedicated for the use case. So from the Kenny point of view, this is really uh, well, a composition of different and independent security policies that may be loaded over time during the lifetime of the system. Okay, and here, what is Lanoc? So Lanoc is a mandatory access control system which is kind of special because it is not dedicated to the system administrator or the Linux distro mainers. Their Linux is a set 
of features which I use uh, through free syscalls. And well, it is dedicated to app developer at first, but of course can be used by uh, users, by system users too, and so on. And yeah, it's able to add built-in sandboxing into applications, which will help to um, follow the logic, the behavior of the application. Uh, for example, um, you may configure a web server which access um, well, uh, uh, directory containing uh, HTML files, and so it is legitimate for this server to read all the files in the directory, but it may not be legitimate to read uh, whatever secrets uh, may be in the slash home directory, for example. Um, yeah, and another important point is that so it can be used for sandboxing your own application, but we should also consider trusted, well, third-party um, components. So this might include libraries, but also, um, well, services that may or may not be as trusted as your own development. So, yeah, we have um, some solution for, well, to secure supply chain, but uh, sandboxing is also another layer of security. Let's go for the first part of the talk. Lifting the file reporting limits. So this is mostly about the rename and the link syscalls. Initial rename is to be able to move a file and well, link to create new paths pointing to the same content. Um, initially, the file system access control types which were supported by Unlock were mainly to uh, control execution, read, write uh, to a file, uh, to be able to list a directory or remove some files from it, and to create files according to that type. For example, to be able to create a regular file, uh, name pipes, and stuff like that. So to be able to enforce a security policy, well, for an unprivileged uh, ecosystem, uh, we need to be able to identify file hierarchies. And that was the first challenge. Because we cannot rely on extended attributes on file, we may not be able to rely on paths because, well, a sandbox process may be uh, executing in a specific namespace, so you may not be aware of the full, absolute um, path of specific um, hierarchy. And, um, yeah, so it may not be able to write uh, to a file or to a file system. So um, that's the reason why Landlog uses kind of an ephemeral inode tagging. So on the fly, an application wishing to sandbox itself can identify a set of files, set of inodes, in fact, and put some restrictions on them. Or, um, to be more correct, some exceptions. Um, and yeah, so we also should keep in mind that there's multiple independent security policies running on the same system, so each of them may identify the same file archives, and you should be able to, well, identify these archives, but for this specific set of processes. Let's start uh, with an example of file system policy composition, so that might be more clear. So Landlock enabled to have multiple security policies at the same time for different applications, but also it enables to create nested sandboxing because you may, for example, have a system service that launch and sandbox itself, and after, let's say it is a SSH server, um, after a user connects to this server, well, um, a new process might be spawned and a uh, new restriction could be added to this specific process. So this way, you can have multiple layers of security policies. In this first layer, um, it is quite a generic security policy, which mostly restricts uh, execution to the slash dev directory and the home user directory, and some uh, directory like TMP, or that may contain cache files or temporary directories, temporary files. The second layer, for example, when 
uh, the user launch um, picture application. Uh, could be, well, the developer might think, well, my application only need, need to access uh, some cache files, which are in the home directory, dot cache uh, slash app. And, well, my application might also access some of its configuration files in a, read, in a read and write way, because you might want to change the configuration through your application. And because it is a well, application dedicated to display pictures, um, well, you know that you should be able to read some files, some, some pictures in the picture data. So that's a second layer. And once the, the, the user wants to open a specific file, this display application could create another layer of security. And at this point, um, well, the application knows that only a specific file here, the cool.jpg file, should be accessed and in a readable way. But um, the cache directory might also be useful uh, well, to store some um, uh, parsing of this picture. But the configuration might not be required and other accesses to the files, same. So here we have three layers and now let's see how the kernels um, identify if an access request is legitimate or not. At first, it looks for, well, the target file, which is in this case, in this case the cool.jpg uh, file. So the third layer allowed to access this file uh, in a read way. Okay. Then it is okay for the first layer, but it's still two layers remain. So the kernel continues to pass to the parent directory, which is here, the pictures directory. And the thing is, well, the second layer allowed um, this directory to be read, so it's okay. And there's a check. And at the third um, check, well, going to the parent directory again, um, the kernel well, found that uh, the home directory is in fact allowed to be read to. It was, well, it is allowed to be written, but only for the first layer. And that's not requested, so that's out of scope anyway. But the read request is legitimate for all three layers. So that's good. It is allowed, and you can view a cat picture. That's good. Okay. But um, the thing is, Landlock relies on file archives to identify files and to map um, access to this uh, set of files. So it also means that we cannot, um, we may not be um, safe while modifying these file archives. Because if you identify something with a specific path, but you, you change, uh, rename this path or you, you move a directory, well, that may change stuff. And that's especially the case for renaming and linking. And that's one of the most annoying limitations um, with, which um, um, prohibit, for example, uh, generic containers to use Landlock as is. Well, to use Landlock until now. So let's see an exa example of what could go wrong here. And um, when I I'll have, I'll have explain everything here, the current rules. I will ask a question. Here, it is a sandbox with three rules. The first one is to allow, uh, well, read access to the home directory. The second rule is to allow write access to the work directory. So the work directory can be read and write because the parent of the work directory is the user directory. And the third rule is to allow um, files in the tools directory to be executed. So, um, well, it may uh, contain a set of scripts and stuff like that. And what could go wrong if the user wants to link the tools foo file to the work foo file? Does anyone have an idea?
Could, could you please? Yeah. So, yeah, that's correct. So the answer was, um, well, in a nutshell, it is a way to gain more privileges. So it's kind of a privilege escalation. Um, so accessing the, the full files through the tools directory only allow, allow execution and read. Okay. But accessing this, well, the work full file, so the full files through the work directory, allows, well, only read and write except that the underlying inode and the underlying data are the same. So this kind of, um, kind of mirror which gives on the one side the ability to read and execute a file and the other to, to write to the file. So this would allow, if it was allowed, to read, write and execute a content which might not be what we want um, for this use case. Now enters a new access control types, which is called landlock access FS refer. So refer, well, to refer to something, to refer to an inode. To be able to link or rename a file, uh, it is now required to have these access types for a specific hierarchy for the source and the destination. But it is not enough. To be able to link a rename file, well, of, of course, you, you, should, you should be allowed to write to the destination directory and potentially to remove some file from the source directory, in, in the case of the rename. And last but not least, um, well, we need to be sure that this will not lead to a kind of privilege escalation. So uh, the kernel checks that um, the destination directory will not give more access right to the file which are already um, uh, allowed on the source directory. Okay, so let's get the same, quite the same rule set and see how we could allow this workflow. This kind of um, strange policy, but it's for this example. So we still have read access to the home directory, but we also have the new access type, uh, so the refer, the FS refer to the home directory. We still have a write access to the work directory, and the third rule still has still gives access to uh, the tools directory in an execute way, but also in a right way, which is kind of weird because you can put whatever you want in the directory, execute, read, and write. But that's for the example to explain how to link, well, which kind of check could be um, legitimate to link a file uh, from source to a destination. So, um, Yeah, here we can see that the tools through file uh, generate the read, execute, and write uh, access, and the work through file only generate the read and write access. Accesses. So these are subsets of the source, um, uh, the allowed source uh, files. Now, how does the how does this work uh, from the kernel point of view? Well, the kernel first check, um, well, browse the files like it does for a common access, um, access quest. It starts by the source path, which is here the tools foo file. Uh, look for some access rights. So here again, it is only for one layer. So you may uh, keep in mind that as is potentially multiple layers. Um, so we got to the parent directory, which is the tools directory, and there we collect, um, at the bottom left, you see we collect the write and execute uh, access rights. And then we continue to the parent directory, and we collect the read and uh, refer access rights. 
and we continue until the first moon point. So do you have an idea why we can stop at this moon point? What is special about moon points? We name and links. Yeah. So you cannot do hard links. You can do links. Uh, we name, I mean, um, uh, quickly we name a file um, from one directory to another uh, if there are two different moon points. So that's kind of a small optimization, but it's interesting anyway. So here we are. For the source pass, we collected four access rights. Now the, connect, the kernel uh, check for the destination pass and check, well, collect here the write access rights and the read and refer access rights and then stop at the home directory. So that's it. Um, we can see that destination indeed a subset of the source uh, access right. So that's okay, cool. We can um, link a file or even rename it. And so this working, this pass working, also a reason why we needed to switch, well, to limit the number of layers. So right now, the number of nested sandboxing is 16. So I think it's enough for most use cases, maybe not all, but um, that's pretty, pretty good, I think. Yeah, so again, we need to take into account that this kind of passwork is to collect all the access rights for all the 16 uh, maximum layers. And yeah, so 16 layers max. One of the things to keep in mind is that when you rename a file, um, you may get an e-access um, error code, which is when, well, uh, this, the permission is uh, denied, or an exdev uh, error code, which is when you want to uh, link a file from one moon point to another one, which is uh, denied by the kernel. And so this is interesting because if you want to move with the MV common line a file from one directory to another, well, if the destination is denied, well, even creating a new file will be denied. So um, if the deny comes from Langlock, which uh, made such check, um, well, it uh, returned an X, xdev uh, error code uh, in the case of creating a new file will be allowed, and re 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 removing the source file will be also allowed. Um, we'll see an example uh, just after. And so we also introduce a new ABI version, which is um, version specific to Landlock. So Landlock enables user space to get some information, which is important to enforce um, best security approach. So this works uh, simply by calling a syscall here, so the Landlock create rule set, with a specific flag, uh, Landlock create rule set version. So this way you can, well, Appian can get um, and understand the features which are supported by the running kernel. And yeah, so it's again uh, required because uh, we are in a sandbox um, uh, environment and we want to enforce as much as we can because uh, option developers don't know everything um, that the kernel can do. Okay, let's quickly look, go to the last part. There's the networking part, um, which was, um, which is developed actually by uh, Constantin. So um, I think he's uh, in the chat. Um, in Unshell, the idea here is still uh, to be able to restrict the process um, and to protect processes outside of it. So it's not 
um, a system-wide firewall. Um, so in a nutshell, here we want to be able to control the what, so uh, what application can access. So um, in practice, uh, TCP ports or UDP ports, for example. But the who, the IPs, uh, might be more difficult. So that's not on scope for now. And well, that may um, get um, changes. So yeah, that may not be relevant for Sandbox anymore. So this in review, um, a sixth version was sent uh, some days ago. And in a nutshell, there's two new access rights, the TCP connect and the TCP bind. So you can create a rule with this access type and also add the port. So to access to connect to a specific port or to bind to a specific port. Okay, so there's some question which aren't solved yet. Um, but if you have any uh, idea or wishes, we can discuss about that. So here's a list of some questions uh, that might come later. Okay, uh, let's switch to the demo. Okay, so here I hope you see enough. Um, so we are on, um, on a video machine with Landlock, with a new kernel, and with uh, well uh, network supporting stuff. And we have so let's say one sandboxer. I, I copied um, all sandboxer two to um, show the difference. Um, Okay, so here I will launch a shell, bash, with the initial version of Lonoc, so without the FS uh, refer access right. So here we are in a new sandbox, so you cannot read your current directory, but you can go uh, in slash tmp and read what's inside and create files. Good. Okay. Um, so Let's say you want to move this file. So for example, you'll create directory and you, you'll move A to X, A. But before that, let's look at the I node, the effective I node of this file. So, well, you can see it. And if you want to move A to X, A, this works, great. But I just told before that it was denied. But in fact, this denied with exdev. So the MV application knows that it cannot create, um, it cannot rename, cannot create a link. So what this application does is that it copies the content of the file and create a new one and re remove the old one. And you can see that by looking at I note of the new file, which is different. So it's not the same file, actually, the same content. So it works, but may not be um, as efficient. So let's do the same stuff um, with a new sandbox. So we go uh, in the same directory, still, well, it's the same file, so same I load, okay. But let's copy this file here. And now you can see that it is indeed the same I node. So it's not a magic trick. <laughs> it's really the, well, the same file which was renamed uh, properly. So I also launch um, new version of the sandboxer. We should also include here um, new rules that you can see there's, um, there's um, LLTCP bind and LLTCP connect. So this means that this new sandbox, sandbox shell can only bind to the port 2000 and only connect to the port 3000. So we can check that quickly. 
um, if you want to 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 connect um, let's say I will listen here to port uh, 2000 so at the top I'm outside the sandbox and at the bottom I in the sandbox so if I want to connect uh, to this port it is denied uh, because yeah um, it is only allowed to be to bind on this port not to connect on it so yeah that's the other port so let's listen to this port now this works and well we can do the same if you want to uh, bind to something um, so here this port will work okay but if you want to bind to another port it will be denied and if you want to connect to something else it will be denied too okay that was it so what's next really quickly um, the roadmap is well here in short time uh, to add new uh, audit features to be able to easily debug uh, well your sandbox um, to also add new access control, access control types so for networking and process signaling and to improve performance uh, which will be good too of course in the medium term uh, well it is um, again to extend what already exists and some use case uh, may be to be able to uh, follow a deny listing approach so for example to allow every access except your .sh directory okay that was it um, it was a bit more long but I hope you understood and um, yeah it was interesting for you do you have any question for the networking stuff or something else great yeah one question What the networking? Yeah, um, so like you showed an example of you know, how we can check the, the version number of landlines. You know, yeah. Do you have like a similar example of how you know, if we wanted to basically allow you know, HTTP, you know, TCP port 80, for example? Uh, yeah, I can show you that. Um, So in a nutshell, oh, I don't see that. Um, okay, not sure it is big enough, but yeah, let's try. Uh, so that's the code of um, the sandboxer, and. Uh, so here are the um, okay like so in a nutshell we create a rule set here so okay so at the middle you can see there's a rule set with um, handled access FS and handled access NAT. So both of these still contain a set of flags. So for example here, uh, this, all this flag for file system controls. Not really clear, but uh, you can find it, uh, well, on the kernel source code. Um, and then we populate uh, this uh, set of handled access rights and um, this case, well, uh, it's a 
well, the rule set get populated, and um, yeah, so the network part is here. Uh, you create a long log net service ATTR structure and uh, set which action are uh, allowed. This part get populated later. And a field which contains the port which is allowed in this case. So either for TP connect or TP bind. And once it's set, um, well, you add a rule. Um, with the landlock add rule syscall, the rule set which was created before, and you specify it is a net service that you want to add. Well, it is a type of the rule. And then, uh, well, the definition of this service, which is um, the action and the port. So, yeah, that's uh, maybe not um, the best example, but yeah, feel free to look at the source code. I mean, the sample source code. Thank you.